Hi, this is Markus. And this is Nilo. And this is Ville. And we are Insomnium. And you're watching Chaos TV. Okay, so hello everyone. It's day number three here at John Smith Rock Festival, and I have I have here Neil Villa and Marco from Insomnium as guests. So first of all, hello and welcome to Chaos TV, guys. Hello. Thank you. Thank you. So in general, how has the summer been for you guys and the band? Well, pr pretty busy. We've been doing the new album, which is ready now, and a lot of work, of course, finalizing everything and doing the album layout and the band photos and videos and etc everything and then we have a couple of shows here yeah today is gonna be interesting because it's the first time ever that we are performing as a three piece guitarist so iron maiden <laughs> Yanni Gers, adrian smith dave mori lineup and most interesting part is that we arrived yesterday so everyone is a bit tired <laughs> so it's gonna be interesting hangover, tired hangover tired tired tired, tired. <laughs> <laughs> Bad air conditioning in the hotel, maybe. <laughs> Didn't sleep well. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, a lot, lot of work, but it looks pretty good. So we have almost everything now together. So, I mean, we can breathe for a while, and then, then there are lots of touring coming up and an album coming up. So it's going to be fun, I think. I guess this is like the most frustrating part that you are actually waiting for the album to drop, that everything is done, is it? Yeah, of course, because we have the new songs ready and basically the, now we cannot play those new yeah. songs yet, so we play old songs in the festivals, which is a bit frustrating. Yeah, kind of but today we are going to play one new song, which is kind of exciting. Okay, so can you tell us the title of the song? Is that going to be like the first single actually coming from the album or...? Yes, we can, and it is the first <laughs> single, Valediction. Okay. Will okay. be the first single. We try to play it okay. today. So does it like give like extra nervousness within the band if you are like performing a new song first time live? Yes, of course. Uh, playing new songs, but the first time is always exciting and you get nervous and... Now, now we have the first time ever this three guitarists on stage, so extra special nervous, <laughs> everyone. Extra special spede so <laughs> tonight yeah. only. <laughs> so let's see what happens. So where did you get the idea to have three guitarists? Well, it's mainly because, well, I can't do as much touring I would like to do because I have lots of other, other things in life and I'm working in the university. Like things have becoming really, really busy during the past four years, and it's impossible to do full-on touring and, and being a steady job as well. So, and then I think like uh, as Insomnium has been growing all the time a lot. There's more touring going on, and and, and you know, it, it's a profession we're doing now at professional level, and, and we have to have a lineup that is able to do the best tours, be always ready, and and. and because I can't commit, it's easier to have one more guitarist uh, on board, and, and, and I try to kind of come and, and participate as much as I can, but but it kind of works now better. And, and then Yanni has been uh, coming up with lots of new songs as well, so it's kind of a bit of a kind of uh, fresh air, and, and, and so and he's been playing with us for how many years? Three years. Since 2015. Since, yeah, yeah, since 2015, kind of replacing me on live so he's not really a new guy in that sense so he's been around for a while so it's just easier to make his status as, as well as a kind of permanent member so you do will you actually plan on doing that that if you are available you will join the guys and and play some shows or is it going to be like just like a selective thing every now and then or well to be honest we haven't really discussed that fully on what was going to happen, but, but of course that's that's the kind of intention uh, because I, I like to play li live, but it's just like, I can't really, it's hard to kind of commit for long tours and, and, and you know, you have to plan as a band, we have to plan, we, we need to do these tours, these are really important and, you know, music industry is quite, a, quite opportunistic in a way, you might get a good chance 
of, of become a good tour and then you know then you just have to go and then we have to be ready ready to do that and then I, I think kind of makes mixed plan band um, kind of stronger in a way because we can we can do as yeah much now shows. you can do whatever yeah. W- yeah, whatever exactly. offer comes and in and then when I, whenever I have opportunity I can I can come and then we can play as a three piece and then so on make it a special case or we'll see how it ha- how it works out but we, we have the kind of flexibility to do and play with two guitarists or three guitarists so I, I think it doesn't matter that much we can kind of offer a bit extra when we have three guitarists yeah, yeah, playing and, and, and so, so and now we kind of have like a steady lineup yeah. like i think like uh, last year the crazy three gigs were like they were we were playing three gigs yeah. in a row and there was different guitar player in Ville yeah. yeah. and Jani and then Nick Cordell was playing the USA yeah. tour, so <laughs> <laughs> this makes things a little bit easier now yeah, with the steady yeah, lineup yeah, and yeah, it, yeah. it makes some sense other yeah. than yeah. to be it just like a yeah. varamies palvelu. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. Fans know what to expect. Yeah, 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 yeah. They, There's a steady lineup. Mm. Yeah. So, so obviously you guys have a new album coming out like Hard Like a Grave on, on October through Century Media and you set the bar quite high with Winter's Gate, so did that create like a lot of pressure to write the upcoming album? I don't think we don't <laughs> take think we pressures take about outside. anything. Yeah. We mm-hmm. just do something, and yeah. Yeah. there's a quite hard critics in the band already. So yeah. if we, we so made you are your own worst enemies, then yeah, we are yeah. selfistic <laughs> own enemies, and if we, we just please ourselves, <laughs> to yeah. be honest, yeah. then yeah. usually it's good enough if all of us five now mm-hmm. like it. Yeah, then it's probably. Then the riff is pretty good if everybody agrees that okay, yeah. it's good enough for the albums. And B- but does that like become harder and harder with each album, because you are setting the bar like higher and higher for yourselves? Do you need to like do a lot more writing to get come up with a riff that it satisfies I every I one of you? The hardest part on this album writing was to start it, <laughs> when it took like two years to start doing music. But mm. when we started it, it became really easily yeah, really and fast we had yeah. 10 songs so did you had kind of like a writer's block when you started writing it that it was hard to start mm. not exactly yeah. it's usually you need to have a like a break at least yeah. in my my own perspective yeah. like a when you have a new album you just don't compose anything for one year for any particular band mm. <laughs> so it makes just like a empty or tank and just leave it be and then it refills okay. at some yeah, point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no need to stress. I did it in the past a lot, like having like, oh, oh my God, I cannot write any more music. And it, nothing is coming and that's just... Yeah, I would be that kind of guy who would be like quite, <laughs> quite frustrated if nothing comes out. Yeah, it's it's called creative process. <laughs> it's hard <laughs> to be artist. <laughs> it's every second time everything is over. <laughs> so when you actually started writing the album, did you have like a clear vision what you wanted to accomplish with it? Did you have like a s- certain idea where you wanted to go or does it just happen always naturally with you guys that you just write the music and what comes out comes out? Yeah, that's that's the way. Like Winter Skate was different. We had this special idea. We want to do a long song, but mm. I think this time we just everybody started making music and riffs and mm. and, th- and at some point we started discussing about the concept of the lyrics. That was one thing, but mm. the writing process for the for the music it was very natural mm. and mm. and for the really Finnish concept was funny that because it became live in last June in Dallas, Texas, <laughs> which okay. is which isn't exactly the, the most Finnish place on earth, but <laughs> we just had a <laughs> chat about this this concept and thought it it would be cool and then it mm. yeah that's where it all started yeah and I mean and it's kind of hard like you asked like. How can you make a better song? I, I don't know. How how can you even rank song which is good? So, you know, when when you write the songs, it's really hard to know which are the kind of really strong songs. You can make the album, and then it takes probably six months for us to even listen. Like, okay, this this time we really managed to do a really great song. Then and then also when you kind of play them live, some songs come yeah, to work life. and they, some, they, they, some songs yeah, exactly. don't work live. So it's kind of hard to really know. So you just kind of try to do as good job as you can and then, and, you know, as, as Marcus said, we were quite critical towards each other and, and you know, w- but but also kind of constructive in a way that we 
try to make it work, like how can we improve that? Maybe we should change that or something like that. So there's always this kind of discussion going on. So have you ever got the feeling that this is a strong song? When you have written a song, you are like, oh, like, well, this is like a amazing song. Yeah, yeah. So sometimes you know, know it from a, from a start, like, okay, this works really, really well. Yeah. Sometimes you know that mm, I'm, I'm not sure, and and, and you know, it's it, a gut feeling. It's a gut feeling. Sometimes you know, and and you know, but uh, it, in the end of the day, you know, if you're not doing classical music or anything, we just kind of in a way metal music. You're kind of repeating, and and, and as a, as a musician, you kind of repeat what you do all the time in a way. You kind of try to kind of inject some new new aspect to the songs, but you're not really necessarily. You're not reinventing the wheel, coming crazy jazz influences yeah. or something. So you know we just kind of try to do what we do as as well as we can. So do you always tr- also try to think outside the box when you write music, to basically challenge yourself more? <laughs> it's like chasing the dragon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But on on this album, I don't know. It just came really naturally. I think that's the best way. When it, something is coming out naturally, that's usually the best thing. If you start to have some experiences yeah. with <laughs> different kind of stuff, it might become really bad. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so don't sound insomnium anymore, probably. Yeah. I think also insomnium is that old band that have really distinctive own sound. So basically, you know immediately if it is fits to insomnium or not, mm. yeah. because it doesn't make any sense to do an electro album <laughs> or something like that hard rock album no that that wouldn't be you as you said yeah some bands can yeah. pull out of that but yeah yeah there is some examples like bring me the horizon who were deathcore in the early days and now they are like pop rock or mm. whatever so they have kind of turned the band aside yeah. but but for you i wouldn't see that happening so female vocals only <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but you, uh, the concept of the album is kind of like to describe it like to delve deep into the heart of Finnish melancholy. So where did actually that come from? As you said, it was invented in Dallas, but where did it came from? But I, I think the originally we were inspired by this competition that was in Helsingin in Salamat, this Suomen synkimät laulut, the okay. biggest songs in, in Finland. Yeah, that was the most saddest song ever. And we have one of One of the songs on, on this album is an ad- adaptation of that, okay. of that story, and uh, so we we got that idea from there, and then we tried to spot w- some other lyrics and themes from like well-known classic Finnish lyrics or or poems that we could use that would fit this whole concept, and that's how it kind of started the whole thing. We kind of wanted to go deeper because usually the Finnish metal is. When you think about Finnish metal and Finnish sadness, it's like sentence style, cut your wrists, suicidal yeah, yeah. stuff. But we wanted to go more deep into the nature of the old Finnish people, like yeah. Rautavaara did some songs. Those are really r- deep songs, really sad songs, but it's not about cutting your wrist or anything. It's yeah, just yeah, like yeah. a... It's a different kind of yeah. sad yeah. stuff. Yeah, your s- ceiling broke and snow went come inside the house and your harvest got raped and mm. dog died and <laughs> yeah, <laughs> your yeah, yeah, yeah. husband died and kind of yeah. blues. But that's kind of, of part of us in a way. Yeah, It is. And I think that's the idea, the essence of Finnish melancholy. It can be found from those songs from, from Rautavara and Julnuvainio and Peltonemi Hindrikka and all that legacy that everybody knows yeah. in Finland. Yeah. And I guess all, all like now also outside Finland Like metal fans know what kind of music that g- they can expect from Finnish metal bands because of that. Yeah, and it, uh, actually, it's gonna be quite funny after these all these interviews when we're kind of repeating these old Finnish yeah. kind of artists did really different, not not really metal at all, but like yeah. like they, they had the same kind of melancholy, and it's all in new sung in Finnish as well. So I don't know. If, uh, It might be a bit difficult for foreign <laughs> people to really <laughs> kind of yeah. Yeah. grasp. Yeah. We kind of try, try to, to translate kind of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I think we kind of try to have that kind of same spirit in the music and and the lyrics. So it might actually come across, but you know, it comes from a very kind of odd place in a way. <laughs> Basically, it's about 
everything is about getting old <laughs> <laughs> and you hate it. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's basically the Finnish teams usually of Junno Vainio. Everything was better back in the, the days. Uh, early days. <laughs> yeah, if you look at the, the big theme from the lyrics of the new album, that's the big thing that you're getting old and everything was good back then in the youth. That's kind of the big, big thing. Golden days of the youth, they're long since gone. So, long story short, we are having a 40 crisis. <laughs> yes. But was that was like music scene or metal scene better in the 80s than it is nowadays? What do you think? Yes. <laughs> Why? <laughs> was it better or maybe was it just different? Maybe it's also, yeah, it's, it was different. Maybe it's also one of these themes of getting old. Because you fell in love with the bands in the 80s and yeah. 90s, yeah, yeah, yeah. and those bands are important for you. And I don't, I know nothing about new metal. I don't check new bands or stuff. I mainly go deeper to the 70s and 60s. And yeah. but I guess that's also good if you would f- follow pretty much everything that is new around. You would kind of become like a copycat of those bands. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Now, now when yeah. you dig deeper and and kind of do your own thing you are making your the music that sounds like you mm. and not like someone else uh, i think it's a question of kind of being there first and being original like yeah. that was what yeah. happened in 80s and 90s and, and then you know like we, you know every every band is kind of imitating some something they every band gets influences from somebody so it's always it's kind of continuity in a way yeah but i i think in a way the scene was more inventive and I like, kind of knew really kind of big uh, things came up those those centuries, those, those those like 80s and 90s compared to like I think we're kind of repeating more, and I'm not not being that inno- innovative any anymore. Yeah. I think, but uh, I don't know. There's there's lots of really good bands out there, so that's what people complain yeah. about, like rock and metal music, that they aren't like innovating and doing anything new instead of compared to, for example, EDM, where they're like doing a new thing in a way mm. yeah I, i think basically everything has been done already in yeah. metal music yeah. so yeah. it's kind of old genre so mm. everything has been mixed so many times in metal so it's hard to invent completely new thing yeah, in yeah. metal mm. so let's try to mix some junnu vainio <laughs> to death metal <laughs> Into the soup. This time. <laughs> <laughs> so hey guys thank you a lot for your time and 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 all the best for the future as well as for the upcoming album anything you want to say as last words to the fans watching this afterwards word is free come to see the shows buy the album Support the old guys, <laughs> <laughs> old crummy guys. <laughs> yes. Wi- will you try to be around like as much as possible, heading towards US and and playing as many places as possible? Yeah, it's yes. gonna, it's gonna be yes. busy yeah. next yeah. two yeah. years. A lot yes. of things in the works and yeah. try to visit all the places that yeah. want us there. Yeah, so, yeah, exactly. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you.